I can tell you that this is one of the best parts of my jobs, to participate in this celebration that honors the seniors and their families. This year, more than ever, I simply appreciate the fact that we are all here together to celebrate their accomplishments. Regardless of the unique year you have all had, this day is about you and what you have achieved through hard work, determination, and inspiration. Graduation is a time to look ahead to your future and to look at the people around you and express your gratitude to all those that have supported you in reaching this goal. It's an honor each year to begin the ceremony by introducing the valedictorians. I would like to ask our co-valedictorians, Court Colby and Cooper Johnson, to please stand and accept your congratulations from all of us. My fellow graduates, these last few months have been crazy. And I never thought in a million years that this is how our senior year would end. But I guess all things that happen, happen for a reason. Over the last four years here at Conan High School, we have learned a lot. Miss Devine has showed us the magic of the quadratic formula. Miss Cook and Miss Stevens have taught us how to write essays as well as perform Romeo and Juliet. And Mr. Day has taught us how to look at the world through our own eyes instead of the eyes people want you to look through. And all of this knowledge will no doubt be valuable as we go forward in life. But I think that the most important thing we have learned over the last four years is how to work collectively as a team and accomplish set goals. Over the next few minutes, I'd like to talk about what we've learned, the people we have to thank, and the people we have to remember. I told you that the most important thing we have learned was teamwork. Let me give you just a couple examples of what I am talking about. For instance, this fall when we worked at the carnival, it was a true team success. We had Hayden running the jail, Cooper, Cal, and Justice were running the sponge toss game, and Andrea and I were running the football toss game. Another time was this spring when we went over to the grade school to do that science day under the guidance of Mrs. Carlson. That day was amazing, getting to see all the younger kids' faces and expressions during the experiments. One more example that comes to mind was in Mrs. Mayer's class this year, when we did that escape room in the gym. I thought that was really cool, how we used each other's knowledge to complete individual tasks. Nothing we accomplish is done alone. Rather, we need each other for support and coaching. Another great memory was when we won the homecoming week. We competed fiercely that year, if I remember correctly, and somehow we ended up at the top. Next, I'd like to thank a moment on behalf of myself and my fellow graduates to thank the people that have brought us here. I would first like to thank my parents, Joe and Michelle Colby, for always being there and supporting every decision I've made up to this point. I can't imagine how hard it has been to follow me around and be there at most of my sporting events. I can't thank you enough. I would also like to thank my numerous high school sports coaches for pushing me to be the best I can be both on and off the court and field as well as teaching me life lessons that I will abide by and use throughout my life. Next, I would like to thank the Conan School District staff 
for showing me what I can accomplish when I put my mind to something and actually do it. I would like to send a special thanks to all the teachers that I've had throughout my high school career for showing me what is possible. Lastly, I would like to thank my classmates for being a part of this wild ride that is called high school. This has been a long 12 years and I'm glad I got to spend it with you. So now we are high school graduates and soon we will have to say goodbye. There will be lots of online talks and group messages due to these uncertain times that arose over the last few months. There will also be many tears shed. We'll do our best to stay in touch. These last four years have prepared us well. I wish everyone success in their future, wherever it may take you. As a final thought going forward, I'd like to leave you with a quote from Michael Jordan. He said, it is easy to choose the path of anonymity and lead an empty life, but to strive hard and lead an impactful life, one needs a burning desire to realize dreams. Thank you all. Good evening. I am Cooper Johnson and I'm a senior at Conant High School. Before I begin, I would like to show gratitude to the people who have contributed to this school. I would like to recognize the teachers and staff here at Conant School District we don't just care about our education, but also our development as people of character. They have dealt with dramatic, loud, awkward teenagers every single day as a career. That takes a special kind of person and to me, demands respect. I'd also like to recognize the people of Condon. I've never seen another community that cares, that has such, such a connection to their school. From supporting us at home games and sports to passing that bond in November, which will allow us to build a new grade school. These are clear testaments of just how much our community cares about this school. So on behalf of the student body here, we thank you. So my speech tonight will have a couple of different topics that I've learned throughout my time in high school, but they will all fall under the umbrella theme of perspective. My first topic is one that might surprise some people at first. Don't seek achievement. I know, right? The valedictorian telling you not to achieve? No. Don't seek achievement. Seek fulfillment. I physically looked up both of these words in the dictionary. And by the way, when was the last time you actually used a real dictionary now that we have these handheld computers in our pockets? Anyways, the definition of achievement is this. A thing done successfully, typically by effort, courage, or skill. Now you might be thinking, that doesn't sound bad at all. Why is he warning us about this? Well, notice that nowhere in the definition of achievement does it ever say anything about satisfaction. It just says, a thing done successfully. Now, here's the definition of fulfillment. Satisfaction or happiness as a result of achievement. And so, what I'm saying to you is, don't pursue something only because you think it will look good on a resume. Don't go to a prestigious college or get a prestigious degree if you're only doing it to impress. Don't pursue a career that you don't like just because of the moment. Because if you don't feel satisfied with the work that you're doing, or the degree you're getting, or the program that you're devoting yourself to, you will not experience fulfillment. All right, so my next topic is about a perspective that I didn't fully understand until about a year ago. And once I did, it completely changed how I see other people. So I grew up in a competitive, ambitious environment Everything was a competition between my friends and I, specifically Hunter Winslow. Him and I from grade school to high school, who could run faster, who could jump higher, 
who got better grades, who did better in school. Even little insignificant things like who could lace up their shoes faster. Everything. And so this constant competition might have seemed pointless, but it came with so many benefits. My athletic ability, work ethic, and even my cognitive abilities, I believe, were improved vastly by this factor. However, there was another effect it had that I was unaware of. I tended to question why people wouldn't have a similar level of competitiveness. For example, I would wonder why people wouldn't want to play sports. Why would somebody be perfectly content with just watching and cheering from the bleachers? Then my junior year, Mr. Day, a man who understood competitive drive, yet much wiser than I, told me these four words, everyone has a role. At the time, I just nodded, not really sure what he meant, but aware that those were probably some profound words somehow. But my senior year, it suddenly made more sense when I was watching our crowd at a basketball game. I remembered the phrase and I looked around the gym. The player's role is to play, of course, and I knew that the coach's role is to coach, so the fan's role is to fan. <laughs> but then I realized each of these roles are equally important. The player isn't supposed to coach, he plays. The coach can't play for the players, he coaches them. And fans aren't obligated to play because they are needed to cheer. Each group has a role. From that point on, I realized it wasn't like fans were below the players and players were above the fans. It's more like someone can either be a player or a fan based on the abilities and desires of the person. So once I understood this, I realized that me asking why somebody doesn't have the desire to play is as ridiculous as them asking me why I would want to play. The best thing about this lesson though is that it doesn't just apply to players and fans. Some people don't want to go to college, while others want to get a PhD. Some people want to fly to Mars, while others absolutely love delivering pizzas for a living. If they are fulfilled, it, it wouldn't make sense to ask them to change. As I wrap up this speech, I want to leave you with something that I've found to be very helpful to get through tough times and to help, to help find the good things. A PMA. PMA stands for Positive Mental Attitude. What I've learned, though, is that a positive mental attitude isn't just a once-in-a-while thing. It's a lifestyle. My favorite integration of this mentality is when something bad happens because while all the negative, albeit rational, people are quick to point out the abundance of problems, the people with a positive mental attitude are able to find the silver lining. There's good and bad in everything, and you will always find the one that you're looking for. If you look long and hard enough, you will always find a bad thing in something good, or a good thing in something bad. A negative or a positive. Something to complain about, or something to be satisfied with. It's up to you to choose which one to look for. And to my fellow classmates, I encourage you to always look for the silver lining. Greetings, students, parents, faculty, and alumni. My name is Troy Laney, and as an alumni, I am extremely honored to be here today and take part in this celebration honoring the CHS graduating class of 2020 and their success. Today, I am going to talk to you a little bit about success, but first give you a little background on me. Just like some of you, I grew up in Condon. I was raised on a farm just outside of Condon near Mayville. Being raised on a farm, you learn at an early age that you have to work for what you want in life. On a farm, there are always chores and work to be done. 
We primarily grew wheat on our farm, which took a lot of time and hard work to keep up with, but also had chickens, cows, horses, and a sheep or two that had to be taken care of. Growing up on a farm taught me that you have to work hard, earn your way, and appreciate what you have. I attended school in Condon from kindergarten through 12th grade, where I graduated in 1988. <laughs> I know, it was a long time ago, and yes, we walked uphill both ways in all kinds of weather to get to and from school. I was fortunate enough to grow up with pretty much the same people all the way through school. We not only attended school together, we also played together, participated in sports together, and hung out together. Playing sports in Condon taught me about self-discipline, dedication, and teamwork. Growing up in Condon, you not only have your family, your friends, and your teachers supporting you, you have the entire town supporting you, be it in sports, school plays, or celebrating a graduation. Once I graduated from CHS, I attended Spartan School of Aeronautics in Tulsa, Oklahoma for two and a half years where I graduated with a diploma in aviation electronics and instrumentation. I have spent 27 years working on a large variety of aircraft components as a technician, supervisor, and quality assurance inspector. Three years ago, I decided to make a change and was given the opportunity to work as a quality assurance inspector for SpaceX, where I have the unique experience of working on rockets that not only transport satellites to space, but also deliver cargo and astronauts to the International Space Station and eventually Mars. I am fortunate enough to have a job I love and work with people I enjoy working with. Along the way, I was fortunate enough to find and marry the woman of my dreams, raise our daughter together, and share life's ups and downs with. I was asked to talk to you about success because just like you, I grew up in Condon and was faced with a lifetime of unknown experiences to take on. Ironically for me, I went from working on a farm, watching satellites and airplanes glide to through the skies overhead to being fortunate enough to have what for me is a perfect job. When I look back at my life and what I have experienced and accomplished, I would consider myself successful. I want you to know success is the best defined on an individual basis. Everyone has a different idea of what success is. The official definition of success is the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. I believe you are in control and responsible for creating your own success, whether it is becoming a school superintendent, a politician, a millionaire, president of a company, CEO of a family meat processing business, president of the USA, doctor or nurse, ser serving your country in the military, a farmer, a teacher, a ditch digger, or an astronaut. If it makes you happy and that is what you want to do in life, do it and you will be successful. Life isn't always about money. It is what you make of it. Roll over the bumps in the road and keep moving forward. Learn from your mistakes and turn them into a positive. If you can look back at your life and smile, you are successful. Remember, the sky's the limit and it is up to you to create your own version of success. Today, we celebrate the six of you and your success. Congratulations, Cal, Court, Cooper, Hayden, Andrea, and Justice, and may you have all the success you desire. Go Blue Devils. Faculty and administration of Condon High School, I hereby proclaim that these candidates have met all the curriculum requirements and standards set forth by the State of Oregon and the Condon School District Board. Seniors, please rise for the presentation of your diplomas that will be presented by our board chair, Mr. Tim Campbell. Court Robert Colby. Court has participated in football, basketball, and baseball for all four years of high school. He has been an been active in Honor Society program for three years. After graduation, he plans on attending the University of Portland in the fall to pursue a degree in mechanical engineering and participate in the university's Army ROTC program. Cal 
William Homer. Cal has been involved in two years of football, four years of basketball, four years of baseball, and a student council member while in high school. Cal is hardworking, hard playing, and loves to cowboy. After graduation, he's gonna take a year to follow that dream, build fence, learn more about ranching, and then take some classes to prepare himself for whatever comes next. Cooper Wayne Johnson. Cooper has been involved in Honor Society, Na National Society of High School Students, Student Government, four years of varsity sports, and 4-H while in high school. After graduation, he plans to attend Oregon State University and go through their Air Force ROTC program. Andrea Zarati Betancourt. Andrea has been involved in volleyball and participated in the prom committee her junior year. After graduation, she plans on going to Columbia Gorge Community College and then to the University of Portland to engage in the dental hygiene program. She also plans on moving out of Condon and getting her own place for her and her daughter. Hayden Scott Seal. Hayden has been involved in helping organize and set up for the high school teen nights at the Elks during his high school years. After high school, Hayden plans to work on his family ranch, learning some basic mechanic skills, and then taking some classes to work in the mechanic field. Justice Lynn Mills. Justice joined Condon High School this year. She's been involved in volleyball at her previous school and was planning on going out for the tennis team but wasn't able to due to the pandemic. She enjoyed participating in the chemistry club and after high school, Justice plans on going to Los Angeles, California to study chemistry at UCLA's transfer program. Graduates. Move your tassels from right to left. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Condon High School graduating class of 2020.